Okay, so phase three of Season of Discovery came out three days ago. And I would say, I think a lot of people would say that it's been a little bit of a rocky start. Of course, I'm having fun. I think most people are still having fun, but it was a little bit of a rocky start. Um, I wrote a really, really long detailed, a thread detailing my first impressions of phase three. And I break down a lot of the key elements, the raid, leveling, the current health, overall health of the game, incursions, the biggest piece of new content, sunken temple. And I'm sure we're going to dive into that here in a minute. But I saw that Metagoblin uploaded a video talking about the disastrous launch. He's calling it a phase three. Let's see what he has to say. And we'll see if we agree or disagree. Here we go. So many players last night, after hundreds of hours of preparation, their favorite snacks piled a mile high on their desk along with 20 energy drinks, oh my went God. to log into Season of Discovery and found that they couldn't play the game. The problem started... This was on the European servers. The Europeans, they had like a solid five or six hours on launch day where they just could not play. On North American servers, it was all good, no problems, but I really feel bad about the Europeans. That sucks. ...in the afternoon, a few people in my guild reported that they were unable to log back in, and therefore the strategy was to just not log out. Unfortunately, including me, many people were just booted from the server randomly. And this yeah. login issue persisted three hours after Phase 3 launched. I'm pretty sure I wonder what the, deal the problem was. only lasted after the launch for EU servers. You know what? I will tell you something, though. We were just taking a look at the Warcraft Logs page for Season of Discovery. Get a load of this. European servers had, what, four or five hours of downtime on launch day? Look. The top four guilds to completely clear Sunken Temple. You'll notice something. European. 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 North American number five. Polar, the number one North American guild. So you know what? They had some downtime. They still pulled it off. Good for them. This has disrupted many players. Firstly, since this problem affected so many people, it meant that a select few were able to get ahead of everyone else, creating an unfair advantage. Admittedly not a huge yeah, one. Yeah, feels bad. Probably doesn't matter that much in the long run. But it did leave many players feeling left out and angry. Many people have busy schedules with work and family commitments. Imagine setting aside all of your commitments to play the game for a few hours on launch to find that you just can't. It does suck and it is infuriating. At the same time, I feel like if you are taking vacation time or sick leave or whatever in order to play, uh, especially a, a, I was going to say any video game launch, but especially a Blizzard video game launch, in the year 2024, I think we all know by this point that on launch days for video games in general, but especially Blizzard games, things are always a little bit tumultuous, right? I don't think you really have the privilege of like being super, I took my vacation time. Okay, I've been saving this and there's a couple hours of downtime. I don't think you can really do that. Okay, like we all, we all kind of know how this goes by now, right? Oh, God forbid you actually wasted one of your holiday days off work. Yeah. Entire guilds in the world first race for Sunken Temple were also disrupted, starting their leveling journey two hours or three hours later than Ooh. everyone else. I know this only affects hardcore people, but hardcore players take up a large part of the SOD community and every playstyle approach should be respected in the game. Personally, I find this very weird from Blizzard. They stress how they want the raid to be available at launch to create excitement around the world first race for yep. the top guilds, but then decide to not take the servers down until they were fixed to ensure an even playing field. Therefore, this world first race has been very unfair. It kind of I, I just like, that's kind of how it goes. So he's saying this, like the alternative would be to just like take down all of the servers while they fix the ones that are having issues. I think like that's probably not gonna happen. Um, I think sometimes life just sucks. Sometimes life sucks, and I think this is one of those life sucks moments. It seems like cadencing the raid one week after launch would be a much smarter idea. I mean, it's an approach that most WoW players actually do like and are familiar with by now. And one of the main reasons that people like it is because it provides a safety net in case there are any server problems on day. Oh, so this is actually a good conversation. I like he's bringing this up, and I want to ask you guys. Here's my live chat. Everyone in live chat say hi. Do you prefer a delayed raid release or do you prefer a day one raid? Day one day one raid where it's available day one or do you like to have a delay to it? Like, 
one week and everyone has time to level up. And then after seven days, you can go in and do it. Okay. The entire chat is saying, well, 90% of people in chat are saying day one, day one, day one. Some people are saying delayed. I do. I do think it is like strictly fairer if it's a delayed release, but if you have a day one raid, then the race to world first is not just raid performance. It's also leveling performance and uh, the preparation that goes into the leveling performance. And, and I think a lot of people like that. I think having leveling be a part of the race to world first is a cool component. I think that is cool and unique and special. I think that's my preference also. Also, let me offer a counterpoint here. There are, there, there are two sort of like delayed raid launches race to world first where it didn't stop the problem the the most iconic one is world for world, race to world first black queen layer where the two top guilds it was like progress and apes and apes ended up um being able to zone into black queen layer actually it was upper black rock spire uh the, like the their instance was down for seven or eight minutes and i think they ended up losing the race because they couldn't even zone into the raid, even though like everyone was able to zone in at the same time. And I think this happened with Mount Hyjal also. It was Salad Bakers who tried to get world first Mount Hyjal Black Temple. And when they zoned into Mount Hyjal, there was a bug with the instance and all of them got ported back to their Hearthstone location. And then they're like 30 minutes behind as a result of that. And so I think having a delayed release where everyone is like waiting outside the instance and then they all zone in at the same time. And I think that sounds good, but historically that also has not gone well with certain raid tiers right so I, I like i said i think sometimes life just kind of sucks there's like no nothing nothing perfect always day one luckily because the seventh boff off oh my god i don't know why i keep saying boff there we're just gonna roll with it the seventh boff of sunken temple is so overtuned but the world first race is now more on an even playing field. But it's so overtuned that the average sod player, I mean, I can guarantee, for, I mean, the average sod player won't even be able to touch this boss. So unless that changes in the future, there's going to be a big problem for the game as most classic players don't have the patience to wipe over and over again. So I I really agree with this. I will say first off, um, after this video is recorded, like probably six or seven hours after Metagoblin put this video out on YouTube, Blizzard actually nerfed almost all of these bosses um now i think it's right here yeah so 23 percent reduction in health 43 percent reduction in health 23 56 percent reduction on health 23 percent reduction 33 percent reduction every single boss in here got an hp nerf other than two of them so six out of the eight bosses got hp nerfs now i'll tell you what still despite these hp nerfs a, a lot of guilds are are still struggling like, like really, guilds are struggling still in Sunken Temple. And I'll show you what that looks like uh, real quick. Progress, Sunken Temple. You can see here. Look at this. 12 guilds. We are three, three, almost four days into Phase 3 now. 12 guilds have cleared Sunken Temple. 198 guilds are hard stuck 6 out of 8. They can't kill Aranicus. And notice zero uh, uh sorry yeah zero bosses are seven out of eight so it's like if you can kill aranicus boom easy and you're full cleared okay and so yeah there there is and this is post nerf the nerf happened uh, yesterday morning like probably 30 hours ago now so there is still a bit of a problem here um i i will say real quick about how difficult this raid is one of the most common frustrations and talking points points of frustration with phase two season of discovery no Morrigan, was this idea that it's too hard for casual player to get into no Morrigan raids there's too much gatekeeping it's very hard to get into a raid everyone's checking warcraft logs are you good enough you're not invited to my raid because you don't have 80 parses on your warcraft log page or whatever and there, like this was a huge point of discussion if you look at any in phase two every single day go to the classic subreddit the official classic wow battle net forums go on youtube go on twitch on twitter this is a conversation that's manifesting. There were some really big YouTube, YouTube videos about this. Um, Asmongold had a video about this, and Zico had a really big video about this. Zaryu had a video about this, talking about gatekeeping in Phase 2 Season of Discovery. This was a big point of frustration so far in SOD in Phase 2. And in Phase 1, it wasn't a problem because BFD was a little bit easier. And so I will say real fast also, I think that the degree to which people gatekeep is a function 
of how difficult the raid content is, right? If raid content is easier and it's more approachable for casual players, then gatekeeping goes down because you, you don't need to vet people as severely. If content is harder, you do as a raid leader or someone trying to pug a raid, you have a really strong incentivization to vet people, to gatekeep people before inviting them to your raid group. Because if you, if you invite people that are maybe not so good, you risk not clearing the raid and no one wants to not be able to kill the final boss. No one wants to not be able to clear the raid or have the raid implode halfway through because people don't know what they're doing or are not just, just not playing well enough. Right. Um, they're not doing the damage they should be with the gear that they have or whatever. And so if you have that risk, man, I would love to invite random people. I would love to pug the raid, but like, I don't want to waste my lockout. I don't want to risk not getting gear I want. Okay, I'm going to check people's workout logs to make sure they know what they're doing. That was what was happening during phase two. And so I am a little bit confused. Given that that was such a huge conversation in phase two, why then has Blizzard decided to make Sunken Temple harder than, than Nomer, right? And, and, and Sunken Temple, most certainly, it's very observably true. Sunken Temple is harder than Nomer. And I don't think that's just because someone might say, oh, well, you know, it's only been out for three days. It doesn't matter. The, the raid is harder. Like, look, look, look at how this raid is. Are you going to have people running successful pugs um, in Sunken Temple three weeks from now? No, 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 you're not. Unless, unless some very serious changes are made, like maybe HP needs to be nerfed again in the next week or two, or maybe some boss mechanics need to be weakened or changed in some way. I don't think you're going to have a healthy, like, uh, pugging ecosystem for Sunken Temple. And I think that's going to make it very, very hard for casual players to get involved with the raid. And you can say, oh, well, you know, I guess they should just stop sucking. Casual players aren't important, don't matter. Who cares if they suck, then screw them. Most people that play the game are casual. Right. Most most people are not really, really good at the game. Most people just want to have a fun, relaxing, low barrier of entry experience with World of Warcraft. And if they can't do that and they quit, then I think the game is like pretty much going to die. Right. That's when people start quitting and servers die. And so I think I think you do need to keep those people happy. And so how how the World of Warcraft rating meta has been. In classical, I mean, this goes back to private servers for a long time, I don't know, 10, 15 years on, on vanilla WoW servers, is that the content is easy. It's very mechanically easy. Molten Core is easy. Blackwind Layer is easy. All, all, all these raids are easy, and they're very approachable, and they're very low barrier of entry for casual players, for players, or that also just aren't, maybe aren't very good, or they don't care to be good. They don't have time to invest in all these things, world buffs and consumables and proper itemization and enchants. They just want to kind of show up and do it and have fun, and it's a social experience. The content has been easy. And then if you're a sweaty, hardcore, no life, try hard player, and that's me, that's probably a lot of you guys, what can you do? You can speed run and you can parse, right? And so that's sort of been, it's the same piece of content, but if you want to take it to the next level, you can speed run and you can parse. And I think as far as vanilla WoW goes, that formula is kind of tried and true, right? I think a lot of people are happy with that. Like that's kind of what you get with vanilla WoW. People like that. The casuals can kind of be casual in the raids and the sweaty people, they can do a parse raid and they can do a speed run pumper raid. And that's kind of the raiding ecosystem of vanilla WoW. But when you have raids that are too difficult for the casual players to enjoy, then I think you have a very big problem. I think that's when servers die. I think that's a big problem. That's when people say, ah, it takes too much time. I, I'm not interested. Ah, it's too annoying. I don't want to do it. Ah, I can't get invited to a raid because people are gatekeeping too hard. I can't get invited to a guild. Ah, that's a big problem. That's a big problem. The point is casual people are really important because they are the, they are the extreme majority. They are the majority of the players, okay? Think about this. The average player is parsing 50. That's the way parses work. The average person is parsing 50 and you can say, oh, 50 is not very good. That's average, right? And so you need, you seriously, you need to K, you need to cater and build the rating ecosystem around those people because that's most people. Let's play the video. Progressing on the boss. I mean, the wipes on this boss is nearly getting to into the hundreds for all the top guilds, which I find just bamboo boozling. Because that is basically the reality of this boss. It's going to be a similar experience to progressing on the last boss on a heroic raid on retail. To be honest, maybe even more difficult. Maybe this is comparable to mythic difficulty because it's that overtune. Personally, I'm actually someone who likes this. Um, let's let's talk about like the difficulty of Aranicus. And let's talk Aranicus post nerf because they nerfed his HP by like 30% or whatever it was. If you want to compare Aranicus, who is most certainly the hardest boss in the raid, he's the penultimate boss, boss number seven out of eight. 
How does his difficulty right now post nerf compare to a retail raid? I would compare it to like a like a mid tier heroic boss. Yeah, yeah, pro probably. Probably like a mid tier heroic boss, not a mythic boss, not the final boss of the heroic raid. Probably a mid tier heroic boss. I think it's 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 much harder than normal. It's much harder than LFR. I think it's like a mid tier heroic boss. Increased difficulty, but I'm definitely a minority. Too hard. Yeah, I think it's too hard. Yeah, You've got I to think cater so. to the majority. And once again, when I say I think it's too hard and that the boss should be nerfed, I'm not speaking on behalf of myself, and I'm not speaking on behalf of. Keep in mind, if you're watching World of Warcraft YouTube videos on YouTube, where you're tuning into live Twitch streams and you're reading about it on the forums, you are much more invested and probably higher skill than the average player. The average player is like not watching YouTube guides. They are not ty typing in their class Discord. They are not watching Twitch streams and hearing, uh, you know, feedback and dialogue from the top players around the world. That's not me, but there there are some good, really highly skilled streamers, like the best players stream and stuff like that. Um, like I said, and so you might. You need, to, you need to be aware, I think, and this is something I have to remind myself of all the time. Of, oftentimes, the way that we approach the game, uh, that's you, that's me, definitely me, this is the extreme minority. Most people have a much more casual experience with this game. Of players. Another disastrous problem in launch was that quests were given an insane amount of gold for completing quests. Some people have reportedly made thousands of gold within the first few hours of the launch. I mean, you can't make this so far. This was a the big The people problem. who were able yeah. to log on to the server or stay logged into the server and get kicked out were the ones who were able to take real advantage of this gold bug. Let's basically be honest, it is a gold bug because it now yep. has been nerfed and hot fixed. So we're now in this weird situation where a select few lucky players have huge money bags of gold. I will say, um, anyone that was doing excursions and getting a crap ton of gold, I don't think that you can call them abusers and I don't think you can call them exploiters because the reality is excursions are like the best XP in the game. And so even, even if the gold wasn't there and it's not now, people would have still been doing excursions. Anyone with a brain looked at that and was like, hold up, hold up. Insane XP per hour, 120K or 150K XP per hour. And I'm making what, 100 gold per hour? Yo, I'm doing this. They would do it even if they didn't have the gold. And so th I, don't, I don't think you can blame players for like, oh, I got to do this. And also there's no, there's no, the, the players didn't know. There's no way for the player to know that the gold is inflated, that there's too much gold, right? Blizzard, Blizzard knew that. And they told us after the, after they fixed it, but there's no, there's no way that players had any idea that that was too much, right? Um, now I really dislike one of the classic developers responded to the community about the concern about this insane amount of gold being given. And this classic developer said, yeah, there was a slight doubling of the gold value, but it's not going to be of severe consequence or impact in the late game. That bothered me. Okay. He said, it's a slight doubling. The gold was like literally 10 times, 10 times. It was giving like 10 times more gold than it was supposed to be. And they nerfed it and it's like one tenth of what it was. Okay. This is not a slight doubling. This is like 10 times more gold. And so, and so yeah, for a good six, seven, eight hours on day one of SOD phase three, we were printing gold and I'm for other people. I was actually solo farming dungeons. I never did it, did any of these incursions, but people were printing gold just accidentally kind of just by nature of, of doing the new content, the new curve day one, I want to do the new content. Oh, wow. Tons of gold. Crazy. Okay. So, and then, and then also it bothered me to say that there's not going to be any late game consequence. How much gold do you think was printed? How much like unintended gold was printed people by the end of this, they're making hundred gold per hour. Some people made 800 gold over the course of the eight hours. If they're spamming incursions, 800 gold times how many people and to say that that's not going to have any economic consequence, that that's not going to be a problem for the people that didn't farm those incursions. We're talking about economic inflationary practices. That's a that's a problem, dude. That is a problem. Now, can can Blizzard do anything about it? What are they going to do? Delete people's gold? I don't even think they have the capacity to do that. I don't think they've ever done that ever with any gold bog exploit. I don't think they've ever done that, right? I don't even know if they can do that. So it's probably not going to happen. What can you do? It's like, well, I guess you can't cry over spilt milk, but yeah, it sucks. What bothered me was the response that the classic route dev had. Ah, uh, it was a slight doubling and don't worry. It's not of any consequence. It was like times 10 and it is of severe consequence. Yeah. It's a big problem. Hopefully it won't be enough to create server economy problems in the long run, 
but I find that quite unlikely. The Nightmare Incursions themselves were giving way too much gold and had to be nerfed twice. The quests were giving 5 gold each, so people were able to farm over 1k gold. No. And because the XP yep. was so high on launch, some people were actually able to get to level 50 in just a matter of hours. Yep. So yeah, those people who were able to stay on the server and get logged in have a dramatic advantage over players who didn't. Also, you only need to quickly browse happened. Reddit to see the numerous bugs that shipped with the launch. Most notorious has to be certain bugs in Sunken Temple and also the Warlock's mm -hmm. Felguard. So one, the Felguard for some reason does less damage than a Succubus, which is weird. He's supposed to be like the highest damage pet, surely. Mm -hmm. He also just doesn't use his cleave ability. For some reason, he gives the player every single massive demonology buff. I guess that's a slight advantage. I don't even think that's a bug. I think this is intended. Given that's still how it is today, one day later, I think that actually is just intended. But fourthly, the damage bonus from Soul Link just doesn't work on him. So essentially, the Foul Guard is yeah. pretty useless right now, yeah. which is a There's massive anti-climax. So this is the problem with not having a PTR, right? So normally, a public test server or a beta a PTR in this case, players can log in, they can test mechanics, they can test a bunch of stuff and they can give feedback and player can respond and Blizzard can respond to the feedback and make a bunch of bug changes and fix bugs, right? But Blizzard is dedicated to this season of discovery idea. They want everything to be super secret and you need to discover it on day one of the new phase and it's all gotta be a mystery. And like there, there are some pros to that. It does sort of retain some of the hype and the intrigue with a new phase, but also, yeah, it it allows for way more bugs to manifest in the game. And so chat, let me ask you guys, I, I want feedback from the live chat. Would you rather, in regards to Season of Discovery, yes PTR or no PTR? Just say yes or no, yes PTR or no PTR? And I'm gonna see what people say, and look at that. Okay, so everyone is saying no, Everyone is saying no PTR. Okay, so what that means is you want to maintain the intrigue and the mystery of the new phase, and you're willing to accept a couple bugs here and there. Okay, so no PTR. Let's keep playing the video here. Video, play. There we go. Sunken Temple is also riddled with bugs. Many people have reported that the second boss randomly resets and therefore soft locks the instance, meaning you can't actually summon oh. the boss again to further progress the raid. Oh, and by the way, the bosses in this raid I've had their HP pulls. Well, if we compare the HP pulls of Nomagon bosses to the mm. bosses in this raid, they've been increased by 400 to 700 percent. Yeah, that's going to be a great strategy for a supposed casual friendly version of classic World of Warcraft. There's a couple things that work here, right? So one, we are we are 10 levels higher. We have new spell ranks and stuff like that. We have better gear better runes. It's a 20-man raid. So it's a 10-man raid versus a 20-man raid. You've got two times as much DPS. So that's like a counter argument against what he's saying real quick. That needs to be factored in. But also, he's right. There was way too much HP, right? Pre-nerf, Iranicus never got killed. Guilds only killed Iranicus after they shaved off, what, 33% of his HP. So there's a lot to consider. But also, he's right. There was way too much HP, no doubt. In fact, they might need to nerf some stuff even more. Craft. So I know a lot of people are going to complain that I'm being too negative about the game, but I'm literally just reporting on the facts that are in front of me. When I look at the comment section sometimes, it really does make me feel like the WoW community would prefer Blizzard to never be called out or held accountable for their actions. Guys, you pay $15 a month for this game, you all deserve a premium product without server instability issues and bugs. Minimal bugs. I agree. In my humble opinion, yep. this launch was very simply just an embarrassment it very clearly wasn't a finished, ready product. They should have taken the servers down until they 100% knew that everyone could log into the game. And if they're not going to do PTR tests for new phases... Okay, no, another question here. Because that, that's something they could have done. We talked about that maybe a couple minutes ago earlier in the video. Chat, if they're having login difficulties, do you think they should take down all the servers while they, fi while they fix everything and then bring them all back up? Do you, th do you think they should like hard mandate and even playing field for everyone because they're having some issues? I, I think, I understand there's pros and cons to it. I think probably no. Also, um, I'm not, you know, a server architect. I guess I really don't know how all this stuff works behind the scenes. 
maybe leaving the servers up and you know having like a slow trickle of players process through the login servers and log into the game slowly is actually better than bringing everything down and then trying to fix some stuff and then bringing it up and then having every single player literally every player try to log in at the same time I bet it's pretty rough to have every single player try to log in at the same time versus you've got 40% of players logged in and 60% that are slowly trickling in as you kind of like uh, are, are stamping out fires here and there and here and there, right? But I'm not sure, but uh, may maybe that makes sense. Let me play this. They need to increase their game testing team and a period in which they do tests to iron out issues like this because I wouldn't be surprised if Phase 3 literally got zero testing. Phase 3 was obviously rushed out, I mean the time between the announcement and the release was one week which was abnormally fast, and a rushed game is just forever bad, whereas a That's- that's true. Um, we had- I think with Phase 2 we had like a three week notice, where we heard about it, they announced it, and then three weeks later we actually could play the phase. This was a one week notice. I- as far as I understand it, I think we had such short notice for Phase 3 because the classic team was pretty much told, you guys- can't announce phase three until the plunder storm hype is over right so i think i think it was like an awkward lineup where they were not allowed to announce it until kind of plunder storm had had kind of played itself out they were kind of put on the back burner delayed game will eventually be good it's probably another classic case of developers being pressured too much by upper management to rush the release with the approach of uh, we'll just fix it later in a patch, which unfortunately is the mindset of most of the gaming industry right now. Fortunately, guys, there's not. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something insanely controversial here. Okay, I think the classic team is probably really busy one making SOD, but also working through the Cataclysm beta and fixing Cataclysm bugs and getting Cataclysm ready to ship in a couple months. I love SOD. My and of course there are problems with SOD, but my my biggest problem with SOD is that there's not enough SOD. What I would love to see, hey guys, Blizzard here. We noticed that you guys really like SOD, so we're going to cancel Classic Cataclysm. We decided not to do it. We're going to double our efforts on Season of Discovery. So every single future phase of SOD, we're going to give you double the content. Okay? We've heard that you guys want more content. You want fewer bugs. We're going to double the investment, the, de the developer time investment. Double the content. Ca Classic Cataclysm. It's got to go. Sorry, no one even wants it. I'm really positive to report on apart from the fact that you can now smoke adobe in germany so anyway ciao there you go there you go it was a rough launch you can't deny it now i will say the classic dev team over the last couple of years has really been fr frankly pretty good at being communicative um, and receptive of player feedback there, there's like a countless number of examples where people are players are very mad about something going on in game and the classic dev team responds pretty hastily addresses it and fixes it now not not every time but it's happened enough times to acknowledge um i'm gonna link this video in the chat it is true it is true it has been a it has been a rough phase i i also think that incursions are probably the single worst piece of new content that we have had in SOD so far in the last six months. And we've had a bunch of new content. We've had Black Fathom Deep, Snowmergon, Sunken Temple Raid. We've had uh, Ashenvale PvP event. We've had runes. We have, we've had the STV PvP event. We've had all different types of things. Uh, what, yeah, what, what is it called? Um, I think, I think that really the, the incursions are probably the single worst piece of content that we have had so far in SOD. I'm not really sure why they chose to go I, I wrote I wrote this here. A modern recreation of the infamous Silithus combat tactical logistics badge farm. This questing format is probably the most repetitive and monotonous grind found in vanilla WoW, as any wielder of Earth Strike or Rock Fury Bracers would attest. I have farmed Rock Fury Bracers two times in my life. Who here has farmed Rock Fury Bracers or Earth Strike in classic vanilla at some point in your life? It sucks. It's like the worst thing ever. I've never met any single person that, hey, I love farming Earth Strike. Hey, I can't wait to farm Rock Fury Bracers. It's awesome. It sucks. It's terrible. It's like the worst thing ever. It's, it sucks so much. And so then why they would sort of like use that format of questing <laughs> as like the new exciting piece of content for phase three. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. No one likes it. It sucks. So, and that's like one of the big selling points of phase three. Well, it sucks. 
it sucks. So we hate it. So we hate it. But that's kind of that. Uh, thank you for watching. Go check out the Meta Goblin video. Let me know how you feel about Phase 3. And um, come find me on Twitch. Come drop a follow on Twitch. Subscribe. And uh, thank you very much. As always, stay safe.